Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on factoring linear expressions. Our objective is two-part. First, to find the greatest common factor of two monomials, and second, to use properties to factor linear expressions. Remember, a monomial is an expression that is a variable, a number, or a product of numbers and or variables. And you can see a couple of examples here with 48x, 28x, 16s, and 40st. To factor a number means to write it as a product of its factors. Now, a monomial can be factored using the same method you would use to factor a number. The greatest common factor, GCF, of two monomials is the greatest monomial that is a factor of both. There are several different ways to find the GCF of these. But if we focus here and say, okay, let's take our 28x and our 48x. Now think, how can I find the GCF of 28? Well, in the past you may have used a tree diagram where you go, okay, 28 is the product of 4 and 7, and 7 is done, and 4 is the product of 2 and 2, so 28 is the product of 2 times 2 times 7. And then we have our x. And you can do something similar for 48. If we look at 48, 48 is the product of 6 and 8. 6 is the product of 2 and 3. And 2 and 3 cannot be factored anymore. 8 is the product of 2 and 4. And 4 is the product of 2 and 2. So as I rewrite this, I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, and again my x. And now what you need to do is find your common factors. We'll have this 2 here, and we can circle. And we have these 2 here, and that's it, except for, of course, now our x. So what we really have now is 2 times 2 times x. Well, we can multiply 2 times 2 is 4 and our x. So the GCF of 48x and 28x is 4x. What about 16s and 40st? Well, let's try something slightly different here. If we look at our 16 we still have now 4 times 4, and each of our 4s split into 2s, and 2 times 2, and we have this. And this method involves Venn diagrams. So if with my 16, I have my 2, 2, 2, 2, and my, don't forget your S. Now what about my 40? Well, 40 can be 5 times 8, and 8 can be 2 times 4, and the 4 is 2 times 2. So using the Venn diagram method, I put my factors of 16 on the left, and now I'm going to put my factors of 40 on the right side with the 2, 2, 2, and now it's a 5. Don't forget your S and T. Now, let's look for our common factors. Here's a 2. We can put that in the middle. Here's a 2. and We can put that in the middle. We have a third 2. And that can go in the middle here. And then we have our S, and that can go in the middle as well. That's an S. And so what do we have in the middle is 2 times 2 times 2 times the S. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and our S. 
So the greatest common factor of 16s and 40st is 8s. So whether you use a set of tree diagrams and you list them out and you circle the common factors or you can use tree diagrams and use the Venn diagram method putting the numbers in the middle that are in common and simplifying both methods will help you to find the GCF of monomials. Now we come to actually factoring linear expressions and you can use the distributive property and the work backwards strategy G, to express an algebraic expression as a product of its factors. An algebraic expression is in factored form when it is expressed as the product of its factors. Now, one method to use is a model, but for something like 12x plus 48, I don't think drawing 12x's and 48 little ones is going to be the most effective way to solve this, so method two will be our best method here, and that is to use the greatest common factor. So let's look for the greatest common factor of 12x and 48. Well, 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. And so for my 12x, I have 2 times 2 times 3 times x. And for my 48, we have 6 times 8. 6 is the product of 2 and 3. 8 is the product of 2 and 4. And 4 can be broken into the product of 2 and 2. So with my 48, there are 4 2, so 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and a 3. So let's look for the GCF here. We have a set of 2's in common here, a set of 2's in common here, and this 3 in common here. So my GCF is going to be equal to 2 times 2 times 3. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. So when we look at our expression, 12 x plus 48. This is going to be equal to 12 times something plus 12 times something else, with this 12 being our GCF. Well, 12 multiplied by what here gets us to x, but, well, x, and 12 times what gets us to 48? Well, if you need to, think 48 divided by 12 is what, or 12 times 4. So 12x plus 48, with the 48 being rewritten as 12 times 4. And now, we can rewrite this as 12 times the quantity x plus 4. And that is our factored expression. So note that the 12 we found as the GCF is the same as these 12s here. And you have to ask yourself, well, 12 times what is 12x? 12x. 12 times what is 48? Well, 12 times 4. And you can see how we rewrote that as 12 times the quantity x plus 4. Now, when we look at example B here, to factor this expression, let's look for the GCF of 3x and 11. Well, 3 is 3 times 1, so it's just really 3, and 11 is 11 times 1, so it's just 11. So 3x and 11, they, they don't break down. There are no common factors for 3x and 11. And when this happens, the expression cannot be factored. So all we do in our directions, as it says, if it cannot be factored right, cannot be factored. And then you move on. 
Lily's favorite picture has an area of 3x plus 12 square inches. Find possible dimensions of the picture. Maybe a picture will help here. A picture of our picture. Well, this picture has an area of 3x plus 12. And if I kind of draw a line here and have 3x being the left area and 12 being the right area, the total area there would be 3x plus 12. Now, what I'm going to need to do is factor these numbers. So if I look at my 3x, my 3 is just 3 times x. And for my 12, if you need to, you can go to the tree diagram. 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. Or if you're able to, you can write your 12 out without that as 12, or 2 times 2 times 3. What's my common factor here? Well, 3. So my GCF here is 3. So I can write my 3x plus 12 as 3 times something plus 3 times something else. Well, 3 times what is 3x? Well, 3 times x. And 3 times what is 12? Well, 3 times 4. And then finish this off by rewriting this as 3 times the quantity x plus 4. So when I look at my rectangle now, my possible dimensions here are 3 by x plus 4. As when you multiply those together, you would get 3x plus 12. Write an expression in factored form to represent the total area of each rectangle. Well, this is similar to the last example we just did, and the total area here is 6x plus 42. Now we need to write this in factored form. So let's look for the GCF of 6 and 42. Well, for 6, we have 2 times 3. For 42, we have 6 times 7, and 6 breaks down into 2 times 3. So for our 6x, we have 2 times 3, and don't forget the x. The 42 is 2 times 3 times 7. And our greatest common factor here is the 2 times the 3, which is just 6. So as I look to rewrite this now, 6x plus 42 is going to break into this 6 here times something plus 6 times something else. And again, this first something is whatever it's going to be to get to 6x, and then it's just, well, 6x. And our second something, 6 times what is 42? Well, 7. And now finish by going, okay, that 6 is going to be on the outside of x plus 7. So my final answer... 6 times the quantity x plus 7. Now on any of these, any of these that we've done, you could always go back and check your work by distributing. 6 times x would be 6x plus 6 times 7 would be 42. So 6x plus 42, that's right back where we started. That's it for this lesson. Good luck.